In this video, we'll see how we can perform certain types of inference uh, in a restricted Boltzmann machine, and specifically, we'll look at conditional inference. We've seen in a previous video uh, the definition of a restricted Boltzmann machine. It's an undirected graphical model with the following uh, energy function. And uh, we convert that into a probability distribution by just exponentiating the negative energy and renormalizing. So uh, actually computing this joint probability uh, is generally going to be intractable in a restricted Boltzmann machine because of the normalization constant, which requires an, uh, an exponential uh, sum over the numerator. Uh, so that particular inference of the pr this probability is generally going to be intractable. It will need to be approximated if we really want to uh, actually compute that number. However, there are other types of inferences that uh, are actually tractable in a uh, restricted Boltzmann machine. And one of the most important is conditional inference of either x given a value for the h vector or h, the hidden layer, given the visible layer, value of the visible layer x. And uh, so what we'll see in the following slides is uh, how to perform that particular inference. Indeed, in the restricted Boltzmann machine, uh, the conditional distribution of either h given x or x given h is uh, actually very simple and easy to compute. So the first fact to know is that the uh, full conditional distribution over the whole vector h, the hidden layer, given the uh, visible layer x, actually factorizes. Uh, so uh, it turns out that it can be written as the product of each uh, conditional distribution of each individual hidden unit given the full vector x. So in other words, all the uh, hidden layer units here are conditionally independent given the value of the visible layer x. The other interesting fact is that uh, these distribution here, the individual, individual distribution of H, J, H, hidden unit H, J given X. Uh, so H, J is a binary uh, valued random variable, so it's a Bernoulli. And it's a Bernoulli uh, which is such that the probability of H, J being equal to 1 also has a very simple form. It's actually just the sigmoid of the uh, linear transformation of X as multiplied by the jth row vector of the matrix of connections W plus the bias uh, of the uh, neuron HJ. So that's BJ here. So here we have the more explicit uh, formulation where I've just written down what the sigmoid is. So uh, we see that computing the uh, parameter of the Bernoulli, uh, of each Bernoulli here in this conditional distribution, so the probability of HJ being equal to 1 given X, uh, is actually very simple. It's quite similar actually to uh, computations we perform frequently in the uh, feedforward neural network. It's the linear transformation of the input vector x uh, parameterized by the rows of uh, the matrix W plus the biases of the hidden units. Also notice that the restricted Boltzmann machine is actually uh, symmetric. Uh, so uh, it's an undirected graphical model. So uh, really the form of uh, the distribution over x given h is not really different from h given x because it's an undirected graphical model. And so uh, similarly, we can then show that each x element of uh, the x vector uh, are conditionally independent given the value of the hidden layer. And uh, similarly, it's going to be the sigmoid of a linear transformation of my hidden layer h. Uh, and now it's going to be parameterized by the columns of uh, W, that is, to get the probability of XK being equal to 1, we'll just do the sigmoid of CK, the bias value for the kth input, plus uh, the uh, product of the hidden layer uh, with the kth column of uh, matrix W. So let's now actually derive this result and see how uh, this is true. So I'll, I'll do the derivation for uh, the condition over H given X. All right, so um, first of all, let's just write P of H given X. Uh, so we can write that as the joint over X and H divided by the marginal over just uh, X. So that's the summation over all possible hidden layer vector, which I'm calling H prime here of the joint P of X 
and uh, h prime. So this whole sum here, that's just p of x. So next, let's just actually write the uh, what p of x and h is. Uh, well, that's just the exponential of the negative energy, which is that, uh, divided by the normalization constant, or the partition function, and similarly here. And also, I've just written explicitly over what we're iterating when we're performing the sum here. So we're iterating over all uh, vectors that are binary of size capital H. Capital H is the number of hidden units. So we notice that first we can cancel out the uh, partition function at the numerator and denominator. And we can also cancel out this term here and here. And that's because it does not depend on H. So it doesn't depend here at the numerator on H prime. And so we can actually take that out. So we could multiply here by the exponential of C transpose X and remove it from here. And then it would cancel out with what's at the numerator. Next, we'll just write down this whole term here uh, into an explicit sum over uh, all indices in the uh, hidden layer. So in uh, this, uh, well, first up, um, this uh, B transpose times H, so that's just the sum over J of BJ times HJ. And uh, also this, we can actually write it down as the sum over the uh, rows of W of X times the row of W times the value of the JF hidden unit. So uh, if you don't see this, uh, I recommend you just sit down and, and see how this is equivalent uh, to that. And uh, then I'm just writing exactly the same thing at the denominator. I've also written explicitly that this sum here can be written down as a sequence of sums over the first hidden unit uh, till the uh, last hidden unit. So a sequence of nested sums over each individual hidden unit. Then because the exponential of a sum is the product of exponentials, I have that this is equivalent to that. We have the product of the exponentiated terms that were into the sum here. And uh, I have exactly the same thing here. Then, I notice that in this product in the denominator, uh, each factor in the product actually depends on a single hidden unit H, uh, J, or H prime J. It doesn't depend, this factor here doesn't depend on the other H, uh, other elements of H prime. Um, and so what this means is that if I'm summing, say, over H prime capital H, all of the terms here in this product are constant with respect to H prime H, uh, capital H, except for the last one, except for H prime H. So the, the last term for J equals capital H. So it means that all of the other factors in this product, I can actually put them in front of the sum and just perform the sum over the last um, hidden unit of the corresponding factor in this whole product here. And once I compute this, well then, uh, this is a constant with respect to all of their hidden units, so I can actually put it in front of this whole sum. And in this way, I could actually uh, write down this nested sum here as just a product of the sum over um, the first hidden units times the sum over the second hidden unit, and so on. So what I've done is that I've converted this uh, nested sum over all hidden units as just a linear product of the, uh, so as just a product of uh, a sum over an individual hidden unit for each hidden unit. So this sum here was a sum over an exponential number of terms, and now here we have actually a product over a uh, capital H number of uh, factors, and each factor in the product is this here. It's just a sum over an individual hidden unit. So uh, now here I'm just writing that as a uh, uh, product with the product sign over J of the sum over the JF hidden unit. So that's just the definition of, of, of that symbol, really. Um, 
And then I can actually write down what this sum is. It's only over two terms for h prime j equals 0 or h prime j equals 1. So if h prime j is equal to 0, then that's 0, that's 0, so the exponential 0 is 1. And then if h prime j is equal to 1, then that would be the exponential of just bj, which is here, plus this term here, because this would be 1. Next, I can just write this as a single uh, product instead of uh, the fraction of two products. Since both products are over uh, the same indices uh, j, uh, then that's just the product over j of the fraction of the exponential of the uh, factor that involves hj uh, divided by 1 plus the exponential of uh, bj plus uh, the jth row of w times x. And now uh, I notice that this is actually uh, a probability. So if uh, hj was equal to 1, then I'd get this term. If hj was equal to 0, I'd get this term. So if I sum over this, ex uh, if I sum over this expression for each values of, uh, that hj can take, for each value that hj can take, actually sum to 1. So that's actually a uh, distribution. And so and this, it turns out, is just then the probability, it must be the probability of uh, hj uh, taking its given value um, condition on x. So now we've shown, we finally shown that p of h given x, so the full conditional over all the elements in h is just the product of the element per element conditional probability of the hidden units in my uh, hidden layer. Now let's actually show that this is just a sigmoid of a linear transformation of x. So uh, we had before that uh, uh, this is equal to that. That's just the last part of our derivation on the previous slide. And now I notice that if I multiply here by the exponential of minus bj minus wj dot x here and here as well, so essentially multiplying the whole expression by 1, then this would cancel out with that, uh, this here would cancel out with that, and then 1 here would be replaced by the exponential of the negative term. And so that's exactly what we have here. We have 1 over 1 plus the exponential of the uh, negative uh, linear transformation of x. And by definition, 1 over the exponential, uh, sorry, 1 over 1 plus the exponential of minus something, that's the sigmoid. So that's just really the sigmoid of the linear transformation of x. So now we've shown that this conditional distribution over a single uh, hidden unit is the sigmoid of the linear transformation of x when it's multiplied by the connections between hj and all elements in x and then we add the bias of uh, the JF hidden unit. And uh, just a final remark that uh, really here I've done a full demonstration of uh, this conditional uh, uh, distribution in an RBM, and in particular the uh, really useful property that we get some conditional independences between the values of in one layer given all the values in the other layer. But in fact, we could have used a general result known as the, or property, uh, known as the local Markov property for a Markov network and uh, uh, for an undirected graphical model, which uh, simply states that if I have a condition on, uh, if I have a conditional, uh, sorry, an undirected graphical model and its associated Markov network over a vector of random variable Z1 up to Z, uh, ZV, and so and here I notice here uh, it should be z i minus one, z i plus sorry z i plus one. So here z uh, i should not appear because it's here. Um, so the local mark of property says that this conditional distribution of one random variable given all the others, it actually reduces to just the uh, uh, conditional probability of z i given only its neighbors. So in other words. Uh, P 
of uh, Z i, uh, sorry, uh, Z i is conditionally independent of all other uh, elements in the uh, uh, Z variables, given its neighbors in the uh, Markov network. And uh, so then we have that this conditional distribution here can be written as the uh, joint here, sorry, the, the yes, the joint over Zi and its neighbors divided by uh, the marginal over just its neighbors where we're marginalizing over Zi. And because this is a uh, uh, undirected graphical model which we can write down as a product of factors like this, um, then we get the product over all its factors, but the factors that involve um, uh, either only the neighbors or any other uh, Zi variables in the uh, full uh, vector are actually going to cancel out in the uh, numerator and denominator. So in the end, this reduces uh, as just the uh, 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 form, which is the product of all the factors that involve uh, Zi and any of the neighbors in the neighborhood for Zi in the Markov network divided by the normalization constant. So the same thing where we're normalizing by summing over all potential values of Zi. And, um, and in fact, so we could have used that formula, which I've sort of shown just by explaining it. You can uh, do as an exercise, try to see how we can get from this to that for a general uh, undirected graphical model that we write down as a product of factors. Um, but so that's just a general property for uh, uh, the uh, for a Markov network and its associated undirected graphical model. So really, the mark local Markov property just uh, shows. So I'll remove some ink. The local Markov property really only refers to uh, this, and then we can exploit uh, the fact that we have an undirect undirected graphical model that separates out as a product of factors like that to actually get this slightly simplified form. And uh, by doing this, we could actually have derived uh, the previous result. So for the restricted Boltzmann machine, these ZI variables really correspond to either the XK or HJ, so either the uh, visible layer variables or the hidden layer variables. And the neighbors would be the neighbors in the Markov network. So uh, in this uh, case, for a given XK, this would be all the uh, hidden units HJ for J equals 1 to capital H. And similarly, for a fixed HJ, this would be all the uh, XKs uh, in the visible layer for K equals 1 to uh, the size of the uh, input layer. And that's because, as we remember, the Markov network for an RBM uh, looks something like this, where we have connections for a given input to all hidden layers. And similarly, for a given hidden layer, we have connections with all inputs. So in this case, the neighbor of this guy is the whole visible layer, while the neighbor of this guy is the whole hidden layer. All right, so this uh, completes our description of conditional uh, uh, inference in a restricted Boltzmann machine. Uh, it's very efficient, and uh, it has a simple form. And we'll be able to exploit this uh, further to perform efficient learning a restricted Boltzmann machine, which we'll describe in the, uh, the next videos.